What is avant-garde art? As with many art terms, the word avant-garde comes from French and roughly translates to vanguard. Avant-garde art is art that is on the front lines. And the term can be used to describe any innovative or new modern art. The experimentations of avant-garde artists, writers, and thinkers often cause shock, and even anger, among critics and general audiences. The mid-19th century paintings of Edouard Manet, especially Olympia and Déjeuner sur Elherb, shocked audiences for their confrontational nudity and manipulation of traditional subject matter. Throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, waves of avant-garde movements have continued to ruffle feathers and push boundaries. From Monet's Impressionist experimentations, to Cubism, to Duchamp's Fountain, 1917. What is avant-garde art? As with many art terms, the word avant-garde comes from French and roughly translates to vanguard. Avant-garde art is art that is on the front lines. And the term can be used to describe any innovative or new modern art. The experimentations of avant-garde artists, writers, and thinkers often cause shock, and even anger, among critics and general audiences. The mid-19th century paintings of Edouard Manet, especially Olympia and Déjeuner sur Elherb, shocked audiences for their confrontational nudity and manipulation of traditional subject matter. Throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, Waves of avant-garde movements have continued to ruffle feathers and push boundaries. From Monet's Impressionist experimentations, to Cubism, to Duchamp's Fountain, 1917. What is vorticism? Vorticism was a brief but powerful artistic and literary movement that developed in England before World War I. In 1914, the editor of a magazine called Blast, Wyndham Lewis, founded Vorticism, but its name was coined by the American expatriate poet, Ezra Pound. Lewis explained the movement when he wrote. At the heart of a whirlpool is a great silent place where all the energy is concentrated. And there, at the point of concentration, is the vorticist, quoted in Dempsey 111. The goal was to create a uniquely British response to cubism, futurism, and expressionism and make energetic art that reflected the jarring realities of modern life in the early 20th century. Visual art representative of vorticism includes Lewis' composition, 1913. A dynamic rectilinear abstraction, and a vortographic photo image of Ezra Pound by Alvin. Langdon Coburn in 1917. The vortiscope was a process invented by Coburn, who attached a series of mirrors to a camera lens to create pictures with multiple layers.
What is vorticism? Vorticism was a brief but powerful artistic and literary movement that developed in England before World War I. In 1914, the editor of a magazine called Blast, Wyndham Lewis, founded Vorticism, but its name was coined by the American expatriate poet, Ezra Pound. Lewis explained the movement when he wrote. At the heart of a whirlpool is a great silent place where all the energy is concentrated. And there, at the point of concentration, is the vorticist, quoted in Dempsey 111. The goal was to create a uniquely British response to cubism, futurism, and expressionism and make energetic art that reflected the jarring realities of modern life in the early 20th century. Visual art representative of Vorticism includes Lewis' composition, 1913. A dynamic rectilinear abstraction, and a vortographic photo image of Ezra Pound by Alvin. Langdon Coburn in 1917. The vortiscope was a process invented by Coburn, who attached a series of mirrors to a camera lens to create pictures with multiple layers. What is suprematism? Suprematism developed between 1913 and 1915 by Russian artist Casimir Malevich 204, 1878-1935, was concerned with pure aesthetics and therefore promoted total abstraction and freedom from realism, politics, and the past. Suprematist paintings often depict geometric abstractions. Malevich was interested in the square as a pure form, and much of his work focuses on rectangular composition. Such as Black Square, 1915, and Suprematist Composition, White on White, 1918. Other paintings, such as Suprematist Composition conveying the feeling of a mystic wave from outer space. 1917 were visual attempts to communicate with the subconscious. Other artists associated with suprematism were Ivan Puni, 1894-1956, and Lyubo Popova, 1889-1924, among others. What is suprematism? Suprematism developed between 1913 and 1915 by Russian artist Casimir Malevich 204, 1878-1935, was concerned with pure aesthetics and therefore promoted total abstraction and freedom from realism politics, and the past. Suprematist paintings often depict geometric abstractions. Malevich was interested in the square as a pure form, and much of his work focuses on rectangular composition. Such as Black Square, 1915, and Suprematist composition, White on White, 1918. Other paintings, such as suprematist composition conveying the feeling of a mystic wave from outer space. 1917, were visual attempts to communicate with the subconscious. 
Other artists associated with suprematism were Ivan Puni, 1894-1956, and Lyubo Popova, 1889-1924, among others. What is constructivism? Constructivism made a major impact on other 20th century movements such as Bauhaus and Astigl. Like Supermatism, constructivism was highly influenced by both Cubism and Futurism and emphasized abstraction and the purity of geometric forms. The movement was founded by Russian painter and architect. Vladimir Tatlin, 1885-1953, who created sculptural constructions. Interestingly, Tatlin did not consider himself a constructivist but rather a productivist. Though his work is considered to be at the heart of the movement. Tatlin made his sculptural assemblages out of industrial materials such as wood, plaster, glass, and metal. He also believed that art served an important social purpose, and the constructivist movement is tied to the radical political changes that occurred in Russia during the October Revolution in 1917. Constructivist Artists believed that art could play an important role in the creation of a new, utopian society. One of the key elements of constructivism, is the idea that a work of art, whether a painting or a sculpture, is created by assembling so-called autonomous elements. For example, a sculpture is made up of individual elements such as a line and a plane. This new concept conceived of sculpture as an additive, rather than reductive process. Materials are compiled, rather than carved away and this had a major impact on painting, architecture, and design in the 20th century. What is constructivism? Constructivism made a major impact on other 20th century movements such as Bauhaus and Astigl. Like Supermatism, constructivism was highly influenced by both Cubism and Futurism and emphasized abstraction and the purity of geometric forms. The movement was founded by Russian painter and architect Vladimir Tatlin. 1885 to 1953, who created sculptural constructions. Interestingly, Tatlin did not consider himself a constructivist but rather a productivist. Though his work is considered to be at the heart of the movement. Tatlin made his sculptural assemblages out of industrial materials such as wood plaster, glass, and metal. He also believed that art served an important social purpose, and the constructivist movement is tied to the radical political changes that occurred in Russia during the October Revolution in 1917. Constructivist Artists believed that art could play an important role in the creation of a new, utopian society. One of the key elements of constructivism, is the idea that a work of art, whether a painting or a sculpture, is created by assembling so-called autonomous elements. For example, 
a sculpture is made up of individual elements such as a line and a plane. This new concept conceived of sculpture as an additive, rather than reductive process. Materials are compiled, rather than carved away. And this had a major impact on painting, architecture, and design in the 20th century. What is the difference between the bridge and the blue riders? The bridge and the blue riders were both groups of German expressionist artists who shared artistic values. Promoted the symbolic power of color. And believed that art could communicate powerful positive or spiritual messages to the viewer. The bridge, known as German as Die Bruck, was founded in Dresden in 1905 by four architecture students. Fritz Blail, 1880 to 1966, Eric Heckel, 1883 to 1970, Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. 1880 to 1938 and Karl Schmidt Radulov 1884 to 1976 Their name came from the philosophical writing of Friedrich Nietzsche and they shared the philosopher's idea that the present day can positively influence the future acting as a bridge to the future the artistic style of the bridge artists was inspired by so-called primitive non-Western art. Such as African masks, which they believed was somehow more authentic than Western art. They were also inspired by nature and Russian literature. Key works produced by members of the The Bridge include Schmidt Totloff's Three Nudes Dune picture from Nitten. 1913, and Kirchner's Street, Berlin, 1913, which depicts two prostitutes, one wearing a purple coat, against a bright pink urban background. Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Riders, was another expressionist group founded in Germany, in Munich rather than Dresden. Members included the Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky, 1866-1944, and German artist Franz Marc, 1880-1916, who was killed during World War I. Marc was interested in the symbolism of the color blue, and he believed that blue was the most spiritual color. One of Marx's most recognizable paintings is The Large Blue Horses, 1911, which depicts the backs and bowed necks of a group of deeply blue horses as if they are distant mountains against a burnt, orange sky. Kandinsky was inspired by Russian folk art and was deeply interested in art history and philosophy. Kandinsky associated realism with the negative aspects of materialism. And as his career developed, his art became less and less figurative. He explained that he wanted his art to inspire spiritual awareness in his viewers. Kandinsky was also inspired by the 19th century artist Whistler to give his paintings musical titles such as Composition for. 1911, Improvisation 28, 1912, and even Contrasting Sounds, 1924. His work is also thought to be inspired by his synesthesia. A neurological condition in which one can see numbers, letters, or even sound as color. Kandinsky's theories and paintings on the spiritual quality. Of visual art were extremely influential for modern art. 
expressionist paintings from both the Bridge and the Blue Riders made a major impact on 20th century art due to their philosophical goals and interest in expressive abstraction. How did Cezanne astonish Paris with an apple? Paul Cezanne 1839 to 1906 is considered one of the most significant post-impressionists and an artist who made a lasting impact on modern art. His earlier work was in line with the impressionists and even influenced by romanticism. But as he matured, he began to emphasize form over narrative. This means that Cezanne became more concerned with creating an awareness of the physical qualities of his paintings than with telling any particular stories. Cezanne's still lives, such as Still Life with Apples, c. 1875 to 1876, use color, rather than outline, to create form. He didn't always use a brush, but often applied paint to the canvas directly with his palette knife. Cezanne wanted to push the boundaries of art, wanted to make an impression. To astonish Paris with an apple as he said. The apples in still life with apples are an arrangement. Much like the undefined smudges of Whistler's Nocturne in black and gold. Brightly colored against a darker background. The apples have a life of their own and engage the viewer by bobbing in an abstract, gravity-free space. Cezanne's apples are not mere fruit, but are painted forms that morph the still life into an association of structures built by color, rather than subject. What is pointillism? Pointillism is the name of a style most associated with the work of Georges Seurat, 1859-1891, who was interested in color theory and experimented with complementary colors. Seurat studied classical color theory and the theories of 19th century chemist Michel Eugene Chevreul. In the Laws of Contrast Color, 1824, Chevreul explained that two adjacent colors would reflect each other's complementary color, the color on the opposite side of the color wheel. In his visual experiments, Seurat placed dots of pure color side by side in his paintings. With the idea that the viewer's eye would blend the colors together, according to the theory. Seurat called this technique divisionism. But art critics used the term pointillism, which is now more common. Seurat's most famous pointillist painting is a Sunday. Afternoon on the island of La Grande Jotte. 1884 to 1886. This very large painting, over 10 feet long, is made up of thousands of distinct painted dots and depicts a relaxing leisure scene. Bourgeois Parisians relax along a riverbank. Well dressed men, women, and children mill about on the grass. Some holding umbrellas, while others recline in the shade. 
the monumental scene has a rather formal style due to the pointiest technique. And the individual dots are quite clear when closely inspected. A number of artists, including Vincent van Gogh, experimented with pointillism and other pointillist works include Maximilian Luce's Morning, Interior, 1890, and Family in the Orchard. 1890, by Theo van Rysselberg, who went through a pointillist phase. Three Apples, 1878 to 79 art courtesy the barnes foundation marion pennsylvania usa slash the bridgman art library who was pablo picasso Pablo Picasso, 1881-1973, is perhaps one of the most famous modern artists of all time. Born in Spain, he produced thousands of works of art during his lifetime. And is known for his artistic genius and avant-garde innovations. Picasso was a painter and a sculptor and experimented with collage mixed media, and sculptural assemblages. He is credited with developing Cubism, along with fellow Cubist and fierce competitor Georges Brock. He helped to popularize non-Western art. And he experimented with symbolism, expressionism, classicism, surrealism, and more. Like many of the great artists described by Giorgio Vasari in The Lives of the Artists. Picasso's talent was discovered at a young age by his father, also an artist. He began formal artistic training. As a young boy and was admitted to the School of Fine Arts in Barcelona at 14 years old. During his studies at the school and others, he copied the work of the great masters. And then later began to socialize with avant-garde circles of artists and thinkers. Picasso's work features a range of styles, media, and forms. And is therefore categorized into periods, including the early Blue Period. During Picasso's Blue Period, he painted the guitar player, 1910. A melancholy portrait of a social outcast playing the guitar with long, bony fingers. After the blue period was Picasso's so-called rose period during which his work became brighter. More delicate, and more varied in color. Work from Picasso's Rose Period includes The Family of Salt and Banks, 1905. A painting that depicts a group of traveling acrobats appearing lost in a desolate landscape. One of Picasso's most important paintings is Guernica, 1937. A monumental work inspired by atrocities committed by Spain's far right political party the Phalange, which was responsible for bombing the Basque city of Guernica, killing nearly 2,000 people. The painting's dimensions reach nearly 12 x 25 feet. It is a mass of complex imagery and swooping, disjointed human and animal figures in monochrome. Guernica was exhibited at the Exposition Universelle, World's Fair, in Paris in 1937. And has since become so famous that its political impact has been upstaged by its importance as a visual masterpiece.
Who was Benjamin West? Benjamin West, 1738-1820, was an American-born painter who studied in Philadelphia and Rome before establishing a successful career as a history painter in London, making him the first American artist. With such a successful international career, he even served as president of the British Royal Academy of Art after Joshua Reynolds and was financially support by a powerful patron, King George III. West's historical paintings strongly adhered to neoclassical conventions, however, in a surprising change from tradition. West's The Death of General Wolfe, 1770, depicted contemporary, rather than historical events and included images of the king's army wearing their contemporary uniforms, not ancient dress. Although the king, and Joshua Reynolds, aggressively disliked this change, it proved extremely popular amongst the public. The king changed his tune, and named West the royal history painter. What is Post-Impressionism? Post-Impressionism is a tricky category. The term literally means after Impressionism, though the fact that some artists are considered both Impressionists and Post-Impressionists, like Paul Cezanne and Georges Seurat, doesn't help. Neither does the fact that most of these artists went through an Impressionist phase. And that some are also considered to be Neo-Impressionists, a term invented by 19th century. Art critic Felix Finian to describe pointillism, a style attributed to Seurat. Regardless, the term post-impressionism is used to describe late 19th century art that rejects the spontaneity of impressionism and is characterized by bright colors and defined brush strokes. Post-impressionist artists were not as eager as the impressionists to dissolve form in their work. And therefore post-impressionism can be recognized by its relatively clear outlines. The most important post-impressionists include Paul Cezanne, Vincent van Gogh, and Paul Gauguin. And other significant artists include Georges Seurat, and Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, among others. Why was Picasso's Demoiselles de Vignon so important? Picasso's Demoiselles de Vignon, 1907, was significant because it shocked the early 20th century art world and foreshadowed Cubism and other forms of 20th century modernism. The large painting, 7.9 x 7.6 feet, depicts a group of nude prostitutes with large almond shaped eyes, disjointed poses and mask-like faces. The painting was radical for its subject matter as well as its incorporation of African style. Especially on such a large scale. The painting was not necessarily a critical success and even Picasso's friends found it to be ugly. However, the artist Georges Brock, 1882 to 1963 
saw the painting and was inspired by its broken lines and geometric dissolution of form. Demoiselles de Vignon inspired Brock to experiment with a style that would be known as Cubism. One of the most significant revolutions in modern art. Who was Paul Gauguin? One of the most famous of the French post-impressionists, Paul Gauguin. 1848-1903, struggled to find critical success during his lifetime. But is now considered to be an innovator who made a major impact on early 20th century modern art. He was primarily a painter, but also worked in sculpture, ceramics, printmaking, and writing. Gauguin identified with the 19th century symbolist movement. And his bold, flatly colored paintings often hold significant symbolic meaning. In 1891, he expressed a desire to shed the corrupting influence of modern civilization and fled to Tahiti where he spent the majority of the rest of his life living in poverty and working on paintings infused with symbolism. Mythology, and Tahitian subject matter, in what is considered a precursor of primitivism. Even before leaving for French Polynesia, Gauguin's work shows evidence of inspiration from folk art. His painting The Yellow Christ, 1889, depicts the crucifixion in Brittany, in northern France. Local women encircle Christ, kneeling in prayer. The bold, flat colors of the painting are reminiscent of medieval. Christian painting and emphasize the power and intangibility of prayer. Later works include Tea No Arioas, The Seed of the Arioi, 1892. Two Tahitian Women, 1899, and Nevermore, 1897, a painting that mixes the influence of Edgar Allan Poe. The traditional female nude, and Tahitian imagery. What is Romanticism? Romanticism was an intellectual, cultural, and artistic movement that went against the rationalism of the Enlightenment and instead emphasized emotion and subjectivity. Romanticism developed in the mid 18th century and remained popular until well into the mid-19th century. It coincided with neoclassicism, and some neoclassical art is even considered romantic. Because of its frequent idealism and nostalgia for the past. During the Romantic period, there was a new interest in medieval literature, art, and architecture. Inspiring Gothic Revival, which was particularly popular in British domestic architecture. Romanticism transcends the visual arts and includes music and literature as well. Both Beethoven and Chopin are considered part of the Romantic movement. As are Victor Hugo, William Wordsworth, Herman Melville, and Edgar Allan Poe. Romantic painters include Thomas Gainsborough, William Blake, Francisco Goya, Theodore Gericault, Eugene Delacroix, Jean Augusta Dominique Angra, John Constable, 
Joseph Mallard William Turner, and the artists of the Hudson River School, among others. Who was Henri Rousseau? Henry Rousseau, 1844-1910, was nicknamed L.E. Douanier, meaning the customs officer because that was his profession. He was an amateur painter who began painting during middle age. Since he was not academically trained, his style was called naive. He showed his work at the Paris Salon de Independence and caught the eye of influential artists who helped him to develop his artistic career. By 1858, he was able to devote himself to art full-time. His imaginative, detailed paintings were inspired by 19th century. Symbolism and psychology and often feature exotic settings and primal themes. One of his greatest works is The Dream, 1910, which depicts a nude woman reclining on a sofa a traditional art historical subject who has been strangely transported into a jungle. Wild fruit hangs from trees and exotic animals lurk in. The brush while a dark figure plays a flute-like instrument. Due to the complex symbolism of the painting. Rousseau wrote an accompanying poem in an attempt to at least partially explain the work. The most common interpretation of the dream is that it represents a woman sleeping on her couch in Paris. And as she dreams, her mind is transported to the jungle. Therefore, the dreamer has been merged with the dream. And the unexpected combination of elements, rendered with detailed realism, foreshadows surrealism. What is 19th century symbolism? The 19th century symbolist movement began as a literary movement in France. Symbolist artists and writers made works that were inspired by dreams, myths, folklore, and the new psychological concept of the unconscious, as described by Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. French poets, including Stéphane Mallarmé, Charles Baudelaire, and Paul Verlaine strived to elevate their work with symbols in an attempt to avoid the limitations of material reality. Gustave Moreau, 1826-1898, and Odilon Redon, 1840-1916, were French artists who embraced symbolism. While the Norwegian artist Edvard Munch, 1863-1944, is perhaps the most well-known symbolist painter outside of France. Munch is the Scream, is a swirling depiction of intense emotion. Munch wrote about it in a journal, saying, I sensed a shriek passing through nature. I painted this picture. Painted the clouds as actual blood, as quoted in Stockstad 1050. Other notable symbolists include Belgian artist James Ensor, and the American Albert Pinkham Ryder. Many symbolist paintings are characterized by a dark moods and macabre subject matter. Who was Jacques Louis David?
Jacques-Louis David, 1748-1825, was arguably the most important French painter working in the neoclassical style. Whose art first exemplified the values of the French Revolution? And then the imperial style of Emperor Napoleon. In his history paintings, such as The Oath of the Horatii, 1784, David depicted patriotic Roman scenes, which emphasized themes of sacrifice and heroism, and captured the spirit of the revolution. His 1793 painting, The Death of Marat, which was commissioned during the bloody reign of terror, commemorates the bloody death of Jean-Pierre Marat, a Jacobin journalist and politician murdered while in the bathtub by a woman aligned with the Girondins, an opposing political faction. Marat was known to have a debilitating skin disease, and often worked while soaking in the bathtub. The painting idealizes Marat, whose body slumps over the edge of the tub, which is presented in a minimalist fashion against a simple bathroom. Quite unlike Marat's real bathroom, which was rather more opulent. In his left hand, Marat still holds a handwritten note, while in his right hand, a quill. Nearby is the bloody knife that the assassin, Charlotte Corday had used to stab him through the chest. David belonged to the same political party as Marat, and this painting clearly serves as political propaganda. Once the revolution was over, David's political fortunes rose and fell. He served a short time in prison, and then as the president. But, he eventually aligned himself with a new power, Napoleon Bonaparte, who ruled over France from 1804 to 1815, and became an important patron for David. What is constructivism? Constructivism made a major impact on other 20th century movements such as Bauhaus and Estigel. Like Supermatism, constructivism was highly influenced by both Cubism and Futurism and emphasized abstraction and the purity of geometric forms. The movement was founded by Russian painter and architect Vladimir Tatlin. 1885 to 1953, who created sculptural constructions. Interestingly, Tatlin did not consider himself a constructivist but rather a productivist. Though his work is considered to be at the heart of the movement. Tatlin made his sculptural assemblages out of industrial materials such as wood plaster, glass, and metal. He also believed that art served an important social purpose, and the constructivist movement is tied to the radical political changes that occurred in Russia during the October Revolution in 1917. Constructivist Artists believed that art could play an important role in the creation of a new, utopian society. One of the key elements of constructivism, is the idea that a work of art, whether a painting or a sculpture, is created by assembling so-called autonomous elements. For example, a sculpture is made up of individual elements such as a line and a plane. This new concept conceived of sculpture as an additive, rather than reductive process. Materials are compiled, rather than carved away. 
and this had a major impact on painting, architecture, and design in the 20th century. What is picturesque? Though the literal meaning of picturesque is like a picture. The term refers to the aesthetically pleasing qualities of a painting that come from texture. Lighting, composition, and engaging formal irregularities. During the 18th century, British painters found the 17th century landscapes of artists such as Nicholas Poussa and Jacob Van Ruisdael to exemplify the picturesque due to their subtlety and mystery. So inspired, British architects even designed gardens after landscape paintings. And during the 19th century, Britain saw a surge in domestic tourism to such picturesque locations as the Lake District and the Scottish Highlands, which were made popular by romantic poets such as William Wordsworth and Sir Walter Scott. What is the sublime? During the 18th century, philosophers established three different categories of aesthetics. The beautiful, the picturesque, and the sublime. In 1763, Immanuel Kant, philosopher of the German Enlightenment wrote observations on the feeling of the beautiful and sublime, and in this treatise, he described beauty as relating to formal harmony while the sublime related to intangible awe and a feeling of being overwhelmed. Edward Burke explained the concept of the sublime in the philosophical inquiry into The Origin of Our Ideas of the Sublime and Beautiful, 1957, when he wrote Whatever is fitted in any sort to excite the ideas of pain, and danger, that is to say Whatever is in any sort terrible, is the source of the sublime, as quoted in Pierce 93. An interest in the grandeur and vastness of the aesthetic experience, the concept of the sublime mirrored. The values and interests of the romantic movement emphasizing emotion, mystery, and the imagination. How are the landscapes of Constable and Turner different? John Constable, 1776-1837, and Joseph Mallard William Turner, 1776-1851, were both successful British landscape painters and yet their styles and approaches to nature were almost completely opposite. After spending some time training at the Royal Academy School in London, but disliking academic convention, Constable dedicated himself to studying nature and searching for truth in his home village of East Holt, in the Suffolk countryside. In an attempt to garner respect for landscape painting, Constable's canvases were very large. His painting, The Haywain, Landscape, Noon, 1821, is over six feet long, for example. His paintings are clear, detailed, and infused with emotion which is expressed in heavy clouds, reflective ponds, and glistening foliage. 
usually calm and pristine. Constable's landscapes offer a subjective image of the manicured English countryside. By comparison, Turner's landscapes are a whirlwind of drama and dissolved images. And present nature as an overwhelming power capable of consuming man and his impermanent structures. Turner is known for his enormous oil paintings, as well as innovations in watercolor. Particularly the borderline abstraction of his sweeping brush strokes. Turner's paintings were shocking at the time. His 1842 painting Snowstorm, Steamer Off a Harbor's Mouth, for example, depicts a ferocious ocean storm within with the actual steamer is barely visible. And it is nearly impossible to differentiate between the swirl of dark clouds and the thrusts of the thrashing waves. Unlike Constable's careful, controlled nature, Turner's is a monster. Who was Francisco Goya? Francisco Goya y Luciense 1746 to 1828, was a Spanish Romantic painter who lived to see Napoleon. Bonaparte absorbed Spain into his empire, a violent massacre of the people by the new government. The restoration of the Spanish monarchy, and the reinstitution of the Spanish Inquisition. Goya, who at one time was the court painter for Spanish King Charles IV, and painted a perhaps too realistic, arguably unflattering portrait of the royal family in 1800. Was inspired by the Enlightenment ideas of the French Revolution and deeply disappointed by the failure of those ideas to instill fundamental change in Spain. Charles IV cracked down hard on social change, even banning the entry of books into the country. Goya's series of 80 etchings, Los Caprichos, The Caprices, completed between 1796 and 1798. Respond to what Goya perceived of as the folly of the Spanish people at the time. The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, an aquatint etching from this series. Depicts reason personified as a slouched, sleeping figure. While reason is preoccupied by slumber, ominous creatures emerge from the darkness. Including owls, bats, and a cat with wide, glowing eyes. Goya's work suggests the genius of Velázquez, the satire of Hogarth, and the refinement of Reynolds. While illustrating a highly individual and complex imagination steeped in Spanish mysticism and superstition. Other important paintings by Goya include 3rd of May, 1808, 1814-1815, which commemorates the massacre of Spanish prisoners by the French. Dark paintings such as Saturn devouring one of his children, 1820-1823, and many portraits. Was John Singer Sargent an Impressionist? Not exactly. John Singer Sargent, 1856-1925, was a supporter of Impressionism and dabbled in the movement. But his interest in light did not extend all the way to completely dissolving any forms in his work, 
as was common with the Impressionists. Sargent was born in Florence to wealthy American parents. But spent the majority of his career painting portraits for members of high society in Britain and France. He was highly successful as a portraitist and tended towards realism. He was roundly criticized, during his lifetime and after, for making superficial art. In 1929, the art critic Roger Fry called Sargent undistinguished as an illustrator and non-existent as an artist, as quoted in Sargent, John. However, since the 1970s his reputation has been on the rise. Scholars now note Sargent's ability to emphasize psychological drama in works such as Daughters of Edward Darley Boyd. 1882, which recalls the sophistication of Velázquez's Las Meninas. His most famous portrait, Madame X, 1883-1884, caused a scandal for its twisted pose and sexuality. While at the time it was a disappointment, it is now acclaimed for its juxtaposition of the pale. Porcelain skin of Madame X, Madame Pierre Gautreaux, with the soft, velvety texture of her skin-tight black dress. In his later years working in Boston, Sargent painted mostly watercolors. Preferring to distance himself from portraiture. Though he was not really an impressionist, Sargent is now considered an innovative. 19th century artist who occasionally painted with an impressionist palette. Who was Angelica Kaufman? Angelica Kaufman, 1741-1807, was an important neoclassical artist in Britain who studied in Rome. Became friends with Joshua Reynolds, and co-founded the Royal Academy of Arts in 1768, though. She was forbidden to study the male nude, a fundamental part of academic training to this day. Despite this, Kaufman painted history paintings, which were held in higher regard than any other form of painting. And was the only 18th century woman artist to do so. Kaufman produced Rococoesque, neoclassical history paintings, including Ariadne abandoned by Theseus. 1774, A Sleeping Nymph Watched by a Shepherd, 1780, and Cornelia presenting her children as her treasures, c. 1785, which tells a story in the life of one of the most powerful women in ancient Rome. Many of her paintings were reproduced as prints. And she had great success as a portraitist for aristocratic patrons. What are some significant examples of 18th century neoclassical architecture? Chiswick House designed and built between 1724 and 1729 by Robert Boyle. The third Earl of Burlington in West London, England. Greatly inspired by the architect Palladio and his Villa Rotunda. Chiswick House features an octagonal dome and a large but simple portico with an empty pediment. The overall style is restrained, 
flat, and symmetrical. Pulteney Bridge designed by celebrated Scottish architect, Robert Adam, 1728-1792. Who also designed great buildings such as the Edinburgh City Chambers and Colzine Castle in Ayrshire, Scotland. The unique, Palladian-style Pulteney Bridge. Completed in 1773, crosses the River Avon in Bath, England, and is lined with shops. Théâtre de Elodian originally called the Théâtre Francais. This austere neoclassical building was designed by Marie-Joseph Payer between 1767 to 1770. Almost completely void of decoration. The portico features columns of the simplest Tuscan order and has no pediment. The building emphasizes its horizontality and geometric symmetry. Monticello designed by Virginia Statements and author of the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson, as his private residence in Charlottesville between 1769 and 1782. With later redesigns between 1796 and 1908. Jefferson was interested in developing a uniquely American style of architecture that would promote patriotism and help to form the new country's national identity. Who were the Brackmans? Felix Brackman, 1833-1914, and his wife Marie, 1840-1916, were both artists associated with the Impressionist style and were part of the artistic social circle that included Degas, Rodin, Manet, and Whistler. Felix was mostly a printmaker and specialized in etching. He is credited with popularizing Japanese prints, known as ukiyo-e. Amongst the Impressionists, especially the work of Hokusai, Marie Brackmond was primarily a painter and began her career by designing decorative porcelain, which attracted the attention of Degas. Though largely absent from art history survey texts, Marie Brackman was one of the premier women artists of the 19th century. Her career was not well supported by her husband, and she did not produce a body of work as large as her contemporaries. Mary Cassatt and Bert Morisot, however. Her work was exhibited at the Paris Salon in 1874 and she exhibited at multiple Impressionist shows as well. What is suprematism? Suprematism developed between 1913 and 1915 by Russian artist Kasimir Malevich 204, 1878-1935, was concerned with pure aesthetics and therefore promoted total abstraction and freedom from realism politics, and the past. Suprematist paintings often depict geometric abstractions. Malevich was interested in the square as a pure form, and much of his work focuses on rectangular composition. Such as Black Square, 1915, and Suprematist composition, White on White, 1918. Other paintings, such as suprematist composition conveying the feeling of a mystic wave from outer space. 1917, 
were visual attempts to communicate with the subconscious. Other artists associated with suprematism were Ivan Puni, 1894-1956, and Lyubo Popova, 1889-1924, among others. How did African art influence art of the early 20th century? At the beginning of the early 20th century, Western artists such as Pablo Picasso 1881-1973, and Emile Nolde, 1867-1956, became interested in the so-called primitive art of non-Western cultures, including the arts of Africa and the Pacific. In France, artists were able to see non-Western art at the Musée d'Ethnographie in Paris. Although they were inspired by the visual expressivity and relative abstraction of much non-Western art, most European artists made little to no attempt to understand the historical and cultural context of the pieces they viewed, and often purchased. Picasso's art was significantly inspired by African style, allowing the artist freedom to explore with color and style. For example, one of his most important paintings, Des Moiselles de Vignon, 1907, is characterized by elongated figures and abstract faces commonly found in African masks and sculpture. Another painting, Mother and Child, 1907, uses bold colors and ovoid forms to reinvent traditional Christian subject matter. Despite the clear influence, Picasso occasionally downplayed the importance of African art his own work, preferring not to talk about it. What was the Gothic Revival? Also known as the Neo-Gothic movement, the Gothic Revival was an 18th hand. 19th century architectural movement characterized by the revival of medieval style. And coincided with the increased popularity of medieval literature and poetry. A good example of Gothic Revival architecture is Strawberry Hill. The private home of Horace Walpole, 1717-1797, in Twickenham, England. Walpole's home design included round turrets topped with crenellated battlements. Tooth-like notches used for defense in medieval buildings. And pointed arch tracery windows similar to those found in French Gothic cathedrals. Another example of Gothic Revival architecture is the Palace of Westminster in London, which was rebuilt after a fire in 1834. Gothic Revival architecture was a popular style for universities both in Europe and the United States, including the University of Glasgow, the University of Chicago, and the City College of New York, among many others. What is vorticism? Vorticism was a brief but powerful artistic and literary 
movement that developed in England before World War I. In 1914, the editor of a magazine called Blast, Wyndham Lewis, founded Vorticism, but its name was coined by the American expatriate poet, Ezra Pound. Lewis explained the movement when he wrote. At the heart of a whirlpool is a great silent place where all the energy is concentrated. And there, at the point of concentration, is the vorticist, quoted in Dempsey 111. The goal was to create a uniquely British response to cubism, futurism and expressionism and make energetic art that reflected the jarring realities of modern life in the early 20th century. Visual art representative of Vorticism includes Lewis' composition, 1913. A dynamic rectilinear abstraction, and a vortographic photo image of Ezra Pound by Alvin. Langdon Coburn in 1917. The Vortiscope was a process invented by Coburn, who attached a series of mirrors to a camera lens to create pictures with multiple layers. Who was William Blake? William Blake, 1757-1824, was a deeply religious English printmaker, painter, and poet who disliked the formal training of the Royal Academy and spent his career working on highly imaginative projects, including a series of prophetic books modeled after the Bible, which he wrote and illuminated. Blake did not believe in drawing from life, and naturalism was not his goal. He drew on his imagination for visual cues and his works are complex, thematic, and often influenced by the style of medieval manuscripts. He created his own mythology that included characters such as Urizen, a name derived from the phrase, your reason, who embodies rationality. In one of his most enduring images, The Ancient of Days, 1794, which is also often called God creating the universe, Blake blends the styles of Michelangelo with medieval iconography to depict the bearded figure of Urizen reaching down from the clouds his open hand extending into the form of a compass that glows with yellow light from heaven. While Michelangelo's images of God are graceful and all-powerful, Blake conceived of Urizen as a complex negative force, and his The Ancient of Days is bathed in deep red and dark tones. William Blake's art was not particularly well received during his lifetime but garnered much critical attention about a century after his death. He is no considered one of the most important English artists in history a significant romantic artist who felt dissatisfied with the promises of the Enlightenment and the values of neoclassicism. What is Futurism? Futurism was an energetic Italian art movement started by the poet Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, 1876-1944, who wrote the first Futurist Manifesto in Le Figaro, a French newspaper. In 1909, Marinetti wanted Futurism to be a wide-reaching movement that embraced the speed and power of modern industrialism. 
the goal was to reject the past and to modernize contemporary culture violently if necessary. Visually, futurism would not have existed without cubism. And many futurist paintings feature fragmented forms and geometric near-abstraction. However, the futurists tried to distance themselves from this inheritance. Painters associated with futurism include Umberto Boccianai, 1882-1916, Gino Severini, 1883-1966, and Carlo Cara, 1881-1916. The futurists created abstract images of machines and placed an emphasis on movement. Giacomo Bala's Dynamism of a Dog on a Leash, Leash in Motion 1912, depicts a small dog with blurry legs and a blurry tail made up of quickly dashed, repeated brush strokes. Umberto Boccianai incorporated sculpture into the futurist repertoire. With works such as Unique Forms of Continuity in Space, 1913. This flowing, abstract sculpture was cast in bronze and creates an interplay between two- and three-dimensional space as a formidable figure with outstretched legs, and no arms, strides forward on a horizontal plane. Futurism changed after World War I, Bachanai was killed after being thrown from his horse during a Military exercise and the landscape of Europe, both physically and artistically, was no longer the same. What is Cubism? Cubism was a revolutionary development in modernist art that began in the early 20th century and lasted for decades. Cubism is characterized by fragmented images or images that have been broken up and viewed from multiple angles. Cubism has its roots in the post-impressionist work of Paul Cezanne and primitivism. It is most closely associated with the work of Picasso and Georges Braque. 1882-1963, as well as Juan Gris, 1887-1927, and Fernand Ledger, 1881-1955. Cubism can be considered an attempt to distill complex visual images into an aesthetically unified whole. Cubists artists are interested in capturing the essence of an object and placing it in visual context. The development of Cubism has been linked by some scholars to the massive cultural and social changes taking place during the turn of the century, including enormous changes in technology and industry. Cubism is divided into various phases, the earliest of which are analytic cubism and synthetic cubism. Analytic cubism was developed by Picasso and Brock in 1909. A good example of analytic cubism is Brock's violin and palette. 1909-1910, in which the image of a violin has been fragmented. As if the violin was made of shattered glass that has been swept up into a pile of crystal like shards. Each shard of the violin is visually analyzed in the painting, allowing the viewer to contemplate the physical characteristics of the instrument in a new way. During the analytic cubist phase, Picasso and Brock painted objects that were almost but not completely, dissolved into abstraction. By contrast, synthetic cubism is characterized by simple forms, 
less abstraction, and the use of collage. A process in which the artist applies elements, such as newspaper, to the canvas with glue. Examples of synthetic cubism include Picasso's still life with mandolin and guitar. 1924, and his collage piece, Glass and Bottle of Susie, 1912. Cubism was revolutionary for a number of reasons. It was the first modern art movement in which artists experimented with near total abstraction. And it went on to inspire other art movements, including suprematism, futurism, and constructivism. Why did ballerina dancers fascinate Degas? Edgar Degas' paintings of young ballet dancers were neither erotic nor psychologically engaged. Like other Impressionists, Degas was fascinated by light. And dancers provided Degas many opportunities to experiment with light as they were usually. Illuminated by heavy artificial spotlights and other types of stage lighting. In his 1877 painting, Dancer with a Bouquet, Bowing. A ballet dancer's face becomes mask-like and garish under the harsh floor lights running along the stage. In addition to light, Degas also explored figurative movement. Another interest that benefited from using the flexible dancer as a subject. Many of Degas' paintings feature dancers as they are stretching and preparing for a performance. Such as his 1879 pastel drawing, Awaiting the Cue. Focusing on dancers allowed Degas to represent surprising angles and poses of the human body. These paintings often feature an angular, cropped quality that brings the drama of light and movement to the forefront, and also shows the influence of Japanese prints. How were painters to respond? As is clear with Impressionism. 19th century artists did not simply stop being interested in realism, this interest merely shifted. Because of the camera, artists in the latter half of the 19th century began to experiment with optical realism and the capturing of movement in a whole new way. In Manet's great painting, Bar at the Folies Berger, 1881-1882, a room full of dancers appears blurry, as they would in a photograph, and is an indication of movement. Photographs are also notable for their ability to capture a slice of life. And paintings such as Degas Off Center El Absinthe, 1876, does just that. Degas crops the picture by slicing through an angled cafe table and cutting off the elbow of a cigarette smoking patron. In a period when artists were already questioning the value of the academic art tradition, the development of photography encouraged 19th century artists to continue to experiment with their techniques and their subjects, and to question the supremacy of classical aesthetic values. What is Jasperware? 
developed by the English potter Josiah Wedgwood, Jasper Ware is a type of porcelain best known for its popular white on blue. Unglazed finish, though various other colors were also used, and neoclassical design. Wedgwood hired sculptor John Flaxman to recreate highly popular molded relief images. That closely mimicked ancient Greek vase designs, which had been recently discovered. Jasperware was effectively marketed and manufactured on a large scale. Making Wedgwood's neoclassical designs available to a wider public than decorative objects made before the Industrial Revolution. Jasperware, and Wedgwood pottery as a whole, remain very popular to this day. Is there such a thing as Impressionist sculpture? Although he never called himself an Impressionist, the work of highly acclaimed French sculptor Auguste Rodin. 1840-1917, achieves many of the same goals as the work of the Impressionist painters. To capture a sense of fleeting time and capture movement. Rodin's sculpture is characterized by rugged realism and expressive poses. As exemplified in his iconic marble and bronze sculpture, The Thinker. But, Impressionist values can be seen in his controversial sculpture, Monument to Balzac. Which Rodin created over seven years, after a commission from the French Society. Of men of letters in 1891 to commemorate Honor de Balzac, the French literary giant. This work captures the spirit of Balzac and the monumentality of his creative genius. Like Impressionist paintings, it takes on an unfinished form and emphasizes surface texture. When Rodin shared a plaster model of the sculpture in 1898, it was heavily criticized and the finished bronze and marble cast was not completed until after his death. Despite the initial criticism, the sculpture, and Rodin's overall body of work, is considered to be among the most innovative and significant examples of 19th century sculpture. And Rodin is credited with foreshadowing modernism. Therefore, not only can Rodin's work be considered impressionist, but it also ushered in a new era of sculptural innovation.